Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at the replacement for this device here from Johnson Controls, the Map Gateway. If you are a Johnson Controls uh, user, you know all about this guy. It's how you get access to your controllers through Wi-Fi or Ethernet and connect to them and download, upload, do whatever you need to do to um, get your programs in. Well, this is no longer available. So we have a replacement. And it is this guy. It is the CWCVT. And we'll take it out of the uh, package here. Get rid of that. So it is a significantly smaller little device. Uh, you can see we've got on one end, we've got our RJ11 that lets us plug into the Johnson controllers. You obviously can plug in on the uh, FC or the SA bus. And then on the other side, we've got a USB-C connector uh, that you could use to power it uh, directly without connecting uh, and getting your power through the RJ11 when you plug into the controller. Um, and we also have an S uh, mini SD card, or excuse me, micro SD card uh, holder here that we can use to do some diagnostic uh, logging and things from our BACnet network that we're uh, talking to. So let's uh, bring in a controller here and plug it in and have a look at the interface. All right, so I grabbed a CVM controller here and I've just plugged in my CWCVT into that controller and powered up super fast to come up and actually I can show it to you now if I unplug we got nothing and I'm plugged into the S8 bus on the controller and we just plug in here and boom we're up and running so as you can see from the uh, initial screen we can see that we're in uh, Wi-Fi access point router mode uh, no devices are connected to the Wi-Fi at the moment uh, but our MSTP is running. We're on uh, 38.4 for our baud rate, and the address of the device itself is 2. And then we can see uh, we've got a little status indication here. Uh, on the right, we've got, it says live, and that means that our BACnet uh, MSTP is live and talking, um, and we have no connection. That's uh, because we have no wireless devices connected. So if I hit this A button here, we switch to the next screen, and that's going to give us the information on the access point itself. So it gives us the SSID of this uh, CWCVT, the password that uh, that access point has, and then the IP address that the CWCVT uh, has by default as well. And you will recognize that IP address because it's the default for the map gateway as well. And then we go another page. We have our system info, tells us how long we've been plugged in for, how long the device has been up in this session, uh, the version that we're on, and uh, the firmware. And then we get some stats on the next page for our MSTP, how long it's taking the token to go around the loop, how many devices are connected uh, at the moment, and if we're getting any errors. And then a just a general status screen uh, that's going to show us what we were looking at on that initial screen where uh, we've got no devices connected currently on the Wi-Fi, but our MSTP is live and talking. And so that's all of the uh, initial screens for looking at status. Uh, if we hold down this uh, B button on the side, you can see it'll switch now the type of mode that we're talking. This talks uh, both... Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So uh, one of the options that I'll show you in a moment is uh, we can actually turn on the ability to sort of use this as a BTCVT uh, like that used to be used way back in the day. So if we hold down that B button, it'll say BTCVT. We hit B again and then uh, it'll turn itself into BTCVT mode, which means we're now talking Bluetooth instead of um, instead of Wi-Fi. And then we get the same sort of setup. Uh, our initial screen is just sort of status. And then we've got pairing info about what the ID of the Bluetooth device is and then the PIN number that it's going to ask you for when you go to pair. 
and then our uptime and our MSTP information. If we do this one more time, we also have the ability to use this as a Bluetooth low energy router. Oops, I'll do this again. Now, right now, uh, this is sort of useless because the application that would make use of this for your phone is not available yet. Uh, Johnson says that should be available by year's end, uh, but at the moment it is not available, so that's sort of a um, useless feature, but it's good to know that it's there and it's available. So all you need to do to switch those modes like I showed, press and hold till you get the blink, and then press again to confirm. So now we're going back into our access point mode. All right, so now I've got my CWCVT uh, connected to my computer, and we can see that that is the case down here at the bottom. This uh, connected is now white, and we can see the status up top here is connected as well. So let's jump into the browser and take a look at the kind of management interface that we get. All right, so now I've got uh, the IP address for the CWCVT brought up in my browser. That IP address, like I mentioned before, is the same as it was on the outgoing map gateway, so 192.168.142.1. And when you plug that in, you'll get an interface like this. I blew up the size a little bit to make it a hopefully a little bit easier to read. Um, so the initial page that you'll get is your BACnet info and settings. Uh, this is where you're going to be able to set your baud rate, your MAC address, uh, your network number, if you're doing anything with BACnet IP or uh, you want to change the BACnet IP information, you can do that here as well. And then, like I mentioned, the Bluetooth Low Energy right now is not a feature that's usable, uh, but in the future it will be. Here you'll be able to change the name that shows up when you go to connect through Bluetooth Low Energy to the app that they have coming later this year. And then we can change the Wi-Fi settings as well. So we can change the SSID of the access point coming from the CWCVT. We can change the password to be something custom, easier for you to remember. And then the channel, if your uh, Wi-Fi connection is uh, unstable or congested. And then the last bit is our diagnostics page. Here, uh, like I mentioned, the CWCVT has the ability to install an SD card, and that SD card is used for capturing your MSTP traffic, and you can enable that from the drop-down here. But from on, within this page, we also have some basic BACnet diagnostics that are available to us, uh, the number of devices, the addresses that of those devices, for getting any errors, speed, uh, loop time, drops of uh, tokens, failures, that kind of thing. And then we can reset that too if we if we needed to um, start over. Uh, and then we've got some device diagnostic information just on the CWCVT itself, firmware version, what mode we're currently in, uh, how many times it's been booted up, and the hardware type. And then we can look at um, some Wi-Fi diagnostics and some Bluetooth low energy diagnostics. And a feature I had mentioned earlier was that you could use this like you used to be able to use the BTCVT um, back in the day that let you connect to your controllers over Bluetooth instead of using Wi-Fi. Uh, that is enableable here, um, but it's an unsupported feature, so uh, Johnson doesn't really guarantee it's going to work all the time, but it's there uh, for specific legacy use cases. And if you just liked using the Bluetooth interface better, um, personally, I think the Wi-Fi stuff is a little bit more reliable and uh, easy to use. But this option is available to you. Um, by default, it is off, but you can come into this diagnostics page, change that drop down to enabled and save it. And then you'll be able to use the Bluetooth like you used to be able to use so that basically does it for the CWCVT. Uh, as far as using it from within CCT, it's identical to the way you use it with a map gateway. Um, you really shouldn't need to change any settings at all. You're just connecting to the Wi-Fi of the CWCVT instead of uh, the map gateway. So hopefully uh, this video was helpful for you. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and like the video. And uh, we'll see you uh, in the next one. Thanks.